and welcome once again to the Conversations That Matter podcast. I am your host, John Harris. As always, here for another exciting, informative, uh, and beneficial conversation with a first-time guest, we have Matthew Pearson with us. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm doing good, John. How are you doing today? Doing very well. I think you are probably third Zoomer, I'm trying to think. Third Zoomer? Who third was the uh, first? I know Turnip Seed was one of them. Yeah, right. Uh, who I got to meet. Uh, I got to meet him a few days ago. That was fun. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah I've never met yeah. him in person. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's an I, I can't remember his name. I think I had someone on uh, months or now it might be over a year ago to talk about uh, they, they had um, I think they were at like a pride rally or something. And they were I, if I remember correctly, they were attacked. I can't remember the details oh, of it even that well. I just know that the guy I was interviewing was a Zoomer, I'm pretty sure. Gotcha. So. Well, I'm happy to be your uh, your third Zoomer. The third Zoomer. I'm happy to help you become culture <laughs> <laughs> on Zoomer well, culture if you want to endure that. <laughs> that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, we were having yeah, a conversation, cool. Matthew and I, a few weeks ago about this. And uh, Matthew had some really interesting things to say about Zoomers. And as a millennial, this is kind of weird for me. I thought I was young, but now I'm not. And uh, Zoomers uh, are very different than millennials in many ways. So we're going to talk about those generational differences and then how, as Christians, uh, we can approach Zoomers, how we should think about Zoomers, how do they think. Uh, and if people want to reach out to Matthew after the podcast, if they have any questions, uh, they can go to at underscore Matthew Pearson on Twitter. Or uh, they can, well, I guess they can't contact you through this, but they can listen to the podcast you're on called the Irenic Protestant Podcast. Yep, so that's right. That's uh, on, I guess, iTunes? Uh, it's on like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, uh, probably anywhere you can find podcasts. But I'm, I'm not the editor, but I know for sure it's on those three. So, yeah. Okay. And as a millennial, I'm still saying iTunes. All right. <laughs> well, ahead, <laughs> so let, let's get into this subject a little bit, Matthew. Uh, I, I know you from writing uh, for American Reformer and just your online activity on uh, X. And, you know, you're a really sharp guy. You understand Protestant theology, Reformed theology. Uh, you're also a pretty politically astute. And, um, and one of the things that I've noticed just before I even talk to you is that younger guys younger millennials but and zoomers in particular seem to be uh more open to right-wing ideas and very uh they they seem to be more on the trump train and they're willing to be loud about it online especially and it's a curious thing to me Uh, i know a few years ago there were some predictions about zoomers being the most conservative generation and i thought oh yeah right like they don't even know what gender they are. And of course, that dynamic is also in the water. So it's a really weird thing. Like, it, it seems like Zoomers are super, at least on a political level, uh, different. Like, they're, they're like, you got really hard left Zoomers, you got really hard right Zoomers. And I don't know if there's a lot in between. It's just kind of like balkanized. So is that an accurate read? Uh, yeah, John, I think that is a largely accurate read. And I was actually just thinking about this today before I came on the cast while I was at work. I kind of, a thought just kind of hit me is that there's really uh, three types of Zoomers, I'd say, regarding politics. Um, I'd say the first is just indifferent because a common trait with Zoomers is just oftentimes like an indifference to things. And I think of like TikTok and how like we all have such short attention spans. You go up and you talk to people and you're like, you know, that's basically destroying your brain. You know, that's frying your dopamine receptors. And what does everyone answer? They're like, I don't care. That's like very common. And uh, you see this in like the political realm as well with some people is that there's a common thing where Zoomers just don't really give a rip about what happens and they just kind of live. So that's one type of Zoomer. The second type of Zoomer is like... I'd say this is pretty prominent, Um, just very far left, like fully bought into, um, you know, like, I don't know if I can say this on your show, but like gay race communism, (laughs) just like the whole shebang, you know, all of them, like, you know, they may have been slightly moderate, but then summer 2020, you know, the Floyd summer of love happened and they all posted the black square. They all posted the BLM things. They all started referring to racism as, you know, like a systemic oppression of people of color done by white people. They started buying into that whole frame. So that's the second. And then the third is, uh, it's going to mainly be a lot of online guys that are, very right wing. Like I wouldn't just say conservative. I would say right wing. Um, You see a lot of these guys online and you see there's a lot of energy behind them and the things that they're doing. 
and um it's just it's weird it's something in the air you can just kind of see it you can feel it uh you run into guys uh, at like these um you know like a tpusa event or just any other event you talk to them for like 15 minutes you know like wait these guys are not normies these guys are like tapped in like a lot you know they they really um they they approach certain things from a very uh right wing angle and so i'd say i'm sorry to take up all that time but i'd say like those are your three options basically is politically indifferent very far left or very far right uh those are your primary options and most of the like somewhat moderate zoomers you talk to them long enough you spend enough time with them and they eventually end up one or the other so that's kind of what i've noticed at least yeah, don't apologize for taking up time. We're here to listen to you uh, speak. And uh, if I can help facilitate that by asking questions, that's why I'm here. So, Oh, I just try and be as succinct as I can. So I just don't want to ramble. But yeah, I, no, that I was good. You, so when we talk about Zoomers, who are we talking about? Like that often people wonder like what years like because um, for millennials, I think it stops at what, 1994 or five or maybe it's more than that. I don't remember. Um. Yeah, I don't remember when. Um. So Zoomers born usually millennials. like after 2000. That's that's what I thought. No, so uh, some Zoomers, uh, I think uh, I think Zoomers actually started in 1997, um, if I'm remembering yeah. rightly. But usually late 90s, um, those are Zoomers because I yeah, those are that Zoomers. makes sense. Then if millennials end in 95 mm -hmm. or six, then yeah, okay. So we're talking about people who uh, have been engaged in technology their entire lives. They have smartphones since the time. I, I don't know. Do you remember when you? Uh, like didn't have a smartphone or when smartphones weren't around yeah no so i mean there was a time when i was i think i was in maybe third grade and i started doing fencing and my mom would drop me off at the fencing place and then in case i needed a call her so she got me a little flip phone that's what she got me but then the next it, but at the same time i had like a little ipod and then i think in fifth grade i got my it was my dad's old iphone i got that okay. and um it didn't really have much service on it but then by by middle school by sixth grade i had a phone that could call and do things so like a cell phone apple phone and everything so literally like one of these were much shorter and smaller wow yeah so you know for me as a millennial uh, i didn't have a phone and it was not even a smartphone. It was like a, a flip phone till I was, I think, 15. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. No, I had it really early. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's totally different. And even something like that, I think, changes. Uh, why don't we start there with technology? So what uh, how do Zoomers think about technology and how has technology impacted the way they think? Yeah, so uh, technology actually has a, I mean, as we were just discussing before, our, my whole connection went kaput, <laughs> ironically. But um, Zoomers have a pretty, uh, technology has shaped them a lot in that uh, technology is the primary way that they actually build a lot of community. Because, you know, every once in a while, there's this pastor online who, you know, he's a bit of a squish. And he, he tweets like, a, oh, friendly reminder, guys, Twitter's not real life. And while to an extent that's true, um, especially pertaining like our niche theology debates and whatnot, uh, regarding Zoomers, this is not fully the case. Um, and John, you and I were discussing this a, a few a few weeks back, um, but I, there actually was a study I looked at from November of uh, 2022, I believe. Um, I could send the study and you can maybe link it or something. Um, and it showed that I think... Um, 85% of Zoomers, if I'm remembering rightly, spend about four hours on social media every day. So Zoomers have large communities online. Um, they, they very frequently will be in these group chats with people they either know or people they've never met before. Um, and so like technology really has shaped them because it kind of like connects them with their communities and they're on it so much. And I mean, that's kind of how I like got connected with so many people I know. Um, the person that I'll be like rooming with once I move up to Orlando in a few months, he's someone I know from social media. I met him. We started hanging out. We became friends. And now I'm going to be his roommate. So like there's a lot of ways that Zoomers connect with people through technology and from their build communities. And so uh, I don't know if that was the exact question you were asking, but I do know that like technology and then specifically through technology, social media plays like a large role um, in, uh, with Zoomers and shaping them. I've noticed in doing evangelism at outreaches that Zoomers seem pretty open to spiritual things more so than millennials. I don't know if that's across the board or just my experience, but they don't seem to 
be as receptive in from my limited vantage point, I suppose, to uh, like the traditional like gospel literature or like the traditional approaches. They really want a, a very genuine conversation, it seems like. And I know some of these same things were said about millennials, that millennials want authenticity and so forth. But uh, I actually think it's more true for Zoomers. Uh, I, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but maybe the question would be, how, how do you see Zoomers wanting to be approached? What kinds of things as a Christian are they more receptive to? Uh, and you know, what, what would you like to see churches do in their ministries uh, if they're trying to reach Zoomers? Uh, yeah, so I would definitely say that there's... Uh, somewhat of an, an, an increase in religiosity among Zoomers because we kind of grew up as like, a, you know, I think it was more with the millennials. There was like the new atheism thing, right? You know, the kind of uh, the kind of trend that someone like a Richard Dawkins embodies and who in the aftermath left us James Lindsay. So thanks, Dawkins. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, that there was kind of the millennials who went through the um, the new atheism thing. And what, well, meanwhile, the zoomers were largely like just little kids growing up. And they're like, I remember the memes, but like back in 2008, I was seven. So like, I was just like, Oh, stay away from that because it's not Christian or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's like a large, um, there's a lot of spirituality and religiosity among zoomers. I would say, um, I don't really have the statistics to like back this up yet. I have, I have some stats for some other things, but not this in particular, but just, from what I've seen, like among people I know on social media, um, even if they're not Christian, you know, they all believe in like astrology or they're all about, you know, getting in touch with their chakra or something or their, uh, I don't know, the divine feminine energy or I don't know, some something like that. Uh, that's pretty common. Um, and among like Christians, at least, the, there's a large draw among Zoomers to more like traditional forms of Christianity. Uh, there's like an attraction to high church and liturgy and things like that, or just something to kind of ground you. Um, and I, I can tell you that except for like one, except for one of them, one of my best friends, everyone except him has basically that I know in real life has basically become Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic, like all of them. Meanwhile, I'm the one who doesn't budge because I'm, I'm petty and think that uh, God's word is sufficient and clear. <laughs> and I, I, I firmly believe in Protestant principles and doctrines and I will to the day I die. But it's very common uh, in my friend group that a lot of these guys have done that because they're being drawn to these more uh, traditional stable values because um, I think a lot of people feel that evangelicalism has kind of given them a sense of rootlessness so a lot of guys kind of want to feel rooted and grounded in something bigger than themselves and i also think that that's part of why a lot of these um these non-christian but like spiritual girls kind of go to like uh whatever it is they believe in because they want to feel like they're a part of something bigger than them even if they don't believe in christianity then if you do believe in christianity a lot of these guys are going to rome or the east so that's a common trend i've noticed and part of that has to do with a very effective you know propaganda through like tiktok because tiktok is when i say propaganda by the way i don't mean that in like a bad way well it's bad in that i disagree with like what they're propagating but propaganda in and of itself is not like something yeah. bad necessarily as you a know, te just technology to truthful and clear with reality yeah so zoomers mm -hmm. are yeah so like they're just eastern orthodox and roman oh sorry you get you go ahead i think there's a delay sorry uh so zoomers it sounds like oh. are somewhat unstable and they come from a background that wants to uh, find that stability in something else and so they'll root themselves into religions even uh, if it means that they can find stability uh yeah no i would i would say that's partly true yeah but again a lot of it um this is gonna be this is gonna get big yeah okay so a lot of this has to do with just the fact that zoomers don't really have anything they're grounded in they're largely a rootless people and this ties into so many different things in regard to religion many zoomers that are belong like that are christians at least belong to an evangelical church that doesn't really have many strong roots or connections to the past in regard to just identity Many Zoomers, like particularly white Zoomers, have no sense of ethnic or racial consciousness and no sense of heritage at all. 
uh, they kind of just think of themselves as belonging to some universal people. So they don't really feel any strong identity in that area. Um, many Zoomers don't have any heroes to look up to, really. Every person they look up to is like a Marvel character or a social media influencer. They're not like, they're not growing up in the collapse. They are, or the, yeah, no, they, they're not bringing about the collapse, but they're kind of growing up in the aftermath of it. Um, someone who uh, has done a great video on this is a Zoomer you've had on your show before, uh, Ryan Turnipseed. He made a, an excellent video on, on Gen Z as well. Um, you just type in his name on YouTube and then Gen Z and you should find it. But he's made a lot of these similar points as well in that it just largely stems from a whole entire, on both the religious and just like political or just, you know, not even political, but just like a conception of who you are as a person in the world there's just a large sense of rootlessness and that's a lot of what drives zoomers. So in reaching zoomers with the gospel uh, and even, I, I suppose this would go beyond just evangelism, but also trying to just get truth to them so that they can live stable lives and be contributing members of society and uh, making sure they're not going down the woke movement or anything like that would the approach be to offer some kind of stability? Like where have you seen success in this arena? Uh, you know, I, I'm wondering if um, couples who open up their house and say, look at the way we're living, we'd like to have you over for dinner. And then providing that example of stable living is maybe the best thing to show Zoomers to, uh, uh, to, to maybe attract them or, um, or, or get them to realize that the things that are being offered mostly in the world are not actually good things and that what they're looking for, what many of them I should say are looking for is provided in a stable Christian household. No, absolutely. Uh, you're right. I do think it is kind of effective to show zoomers like a, a healthy family lifestyle, you know, of, you know, having them over, like, like you were just said, just hospitality or having them over for, you know, dinner or something or giving them something to like look up to basically, because we, a lot of Zoomers kind of feel, a sen they grew up with a sense of either they don't care, like I mentioned with like the three types of Zoomer political people, they either don't care or they're kind of just hopeless about everything. They have despair. They're like, oh, I, all these prices are high, you know, um, it, they, a lot of them resent boomers as well, or, or Gen X maybe even. Um, but honestly, just showing them like, hey, these things are possible. That, that gives a lot of hope to them. And I, I can give you a good example of this. So I'll be, going to, um, I'll be going to seminary in a few months. I'll be starting. And my assistant pastor, um, before he was the assistant pastor there, he was basically like the director of something. I don't know. So we could have a job, <laughs> job there basically um, in the meantime, before he became an official pastor. Um, he was going to seminary while doing that. And uh, he had six kids and, and a wife, obviously, that's where he got the kids from. Um, but and he would drive back and forth like two hours to the seminary and back and things like that. And that was just inspirational because it showed me like, OK, I'm going to go to seminary as a single guy. I only have to worry about this thing. So if he can do it, surely I can. Um, and so like, that's just like a, a brief, like particular example for me. But what I would say that shows is like, if you and in interacting with Zoomers, you know, like you don't need to try and be cool, but just show them that like the good life that they want to pursue is possible. Like that, that, that should be helpful to them, I would say. Like, um, and I know that doesn't like particularly like relate to the gospel. I think in regards to like, preaching the gospel to them it's just I, I mean you know there are particular ways you can do that but really what it would just be is like the classic the classic stuff like you know preach the law of god show them that they're sinful and look there's a lot of things to point out about gen z and sin because we've embraced many heinous and wicked sins especially in like the right. realm of lg barbecue and and all that so there's there's a lot to to work with um there i would say yeah. So when Zoomers uh, are thinking about their lives and what their lives look like, I'm wondering if it's different than millennials. So millennials were we were all told and just like I think Gen X and to some extent boomers that we need to get an education. Millennials, the most especially, perhaps, though, that you need to get a college degree. 
because our parents were boomers and the boomers really valued the certifications, right? And if you don't get a college degree, then, you know, you're basically, you're, you're going to, it's not going to go well for you. Your life is going to be being a ditch digger and you're not going to make any money. And you're, and, and so money kind of becomes the key to living the good life in a way. And Zoomers, I think, have been blocked in some ways that millennials have not. I was able to buy a house in 2016. And my house is now, uh, it is more than two times, you know, the, it would cost more than two times the amount I paid for it. Uh, I, I couldn't afford the, my own mortgage. I couldn't afford to buy the house that I'm in if I was starting out now. And I don't think the same opportunities would have been afforded to me. And, and so I know Zoomers are going through this. And I, I wonder whether or not that affects their dreams of uh, pursuing success. And, and, and I don't think the millennial example is the best example at all. I think it was compromised in many ways. Um, but you still had people that wanted to maybe after they achieve their success, have a family and then enjoy children and then retire and have all these experiences. That's what millennials like to do, right? We're gonna have, a, we're gonna travel. We're gonna eat all kinds of different foods. And Zoomers just don't have the same opportunities. And so, how does that make them feel <laughs> or think about life? Um, well, <laughs> it's like I said earlier. It's either indifferent or indifference or it's resentment. Uh, I think that. Um, I don't know if I have too much to say on that topic, really. I, I think some of it is just a, a little bit obvious. Um, but yeah, no, there is a sense of like resentment, I would say, for Zoomers. And especially, um, I'm going to keep coming back to social media. With like the rise of social media, there's like a bit of like a space to air out your resentment. So you you can have like these white girls crying in the car about uh, how bad their boomer dad is or something like that, you know? Or, and, and, you know, sometimes like what pe these people, what they're saying online is valid and it should be, you know, brought to awareness because I uh, look, you know, as much as I, I love the boomers because they do vote R, I, um, <laughs> I'm not going to be like the boomer defender on everything. Like, I definitely do think that, um, there are things like there are faults in all generations and, uh, there are ways to call those faults out in a way which is honoring to our forefathers, like, and to those who are alive right now. Um, so, like, I, I think that's fair game, basically. Um, but there is a sense in which if you don't do it well, you can you can breed resentment. And I think that's, like, how a lot of Zoomers feel. Um, and especially when, like, uh, I, I, Stephen Wolf has spoken about this as well, when like a lot of these people are, you know, they're crying because they can't afford anything or whatever. And they just so happen to be like a girl that's liberal or whatever. And these like stupid big right wing accounts are like, huh, stupid libtard girl doesn't, you know, uh, pick up your like pick yourself up by your bootstraps or whatever. And it's like you're not helping at all. Uh, you're giving like you're just giving older people online something to laugh at, but you're not by any means like raising cause or like what is actually driving the resentment behind it. Yeah. And so and I think that's actually like a problem on uh, the right wing a little bit is it's fun to laugh. It's fun to have fun. And that's a good thing too. But sometimes you can't make your entire political platform owning the libs, you know, like if you're just laughing at liberals, which is good to do. And you should continue to do that to demonstrate that their perception on things is ridiculous. But if that's the only thing you do, uh, you just have a Paul, like then you're just as unserious as them. Um, and so, yeah, no, that's, that's kind of what I think is I think a lot of resentment gets uh, built up because of the, the things that you mentioned, John. But does that change their goals in life? And so for, I think millennials, the goal was to get the certifications to achieve the success and to have the esteem of your peers and financial stability, uh, which is, I, I realize millennials want to be different than the boomers and there's many things that make them different, but that is one thing that is more similar between millennials and boomers than I think Zoomers. I, I, I wonder whether Zoomers are thinking through like, college doesn't make sense. The certifications don't, I'll get a blue collar job and I'll, and the goal is survival because I can't really hope to afford a house. Uh, and maybe uh, if the good luck has it, maybe a TikTok channel will propel me into being a internet star. And that's the, and, and in that sense, it's the esteem of your fans that 
really matters. It's not uh, like general society esteem in the form of certificates and you know so social respectability. It doesn't seem like Zoomers care as much about that. No, yeah, you're uh, <laughs> you're right, uh, and it comes down to I think the indifference as well among. I, I, I keep coming back to this, but yeah, they're they're either indifferent or they're just planning like how do I survive basically. And, and you are right, there is a bit of a you know a little movement among zoomers where it's just like screw college i'll just work blue collar um i'm kind of doing that right now because <laughs> i currently work in restaurant construction but that's just to save up money for seminary before i go off there and i just graduate college but no that that is um common a lot of zoomers are just um the ones that are at least like growing up now and out of college or whatever it's kind of just they're just floating. A lot of them don't really have goals. I'll give you kind of an example of this. There was like this one time where I found like this, this guy on YouTube. I don't remember what his channel's called, but he was basically like a masculinity self-improvement guru channel. It was not Andrew Tate. I do remember that. Um, but he was, he had to tell people, oh yeah, uh, make sure you set goals for yourself. Uh, women like that or, or whatever. And I just remember sitting there hearing that and thinking, this guy said, tell me to set goals. I was already setting goals. <laughs> uh, but apparently after talking to a few acquaintances and friends about this, it's very common for Zoomers to not set goals for their life. They just exist and live and don't strive for anything, which is, I, I, it's weird. Um, and that's kind of why uh, before I came on here, I talked to a few Zoomers about things um, because some of these things are just foreign to me. Like What'd I really don't you? get it. Huh? What, what did your Zoomer friends tell you? I mean, they, they expressed a lot of these, um, a lot of these things, like kind of talking about how many of them just like many of the people they know just don't have ambitions, uh, or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I, something I was also reminded of is a lot of zoomers don't read, um, despite being a zoomer on Twitter, most zoomers are not on Twitter. They're actually on either Instagram or TikTok because you can just scroll and watch video. Don't have to read words or anything. Um, so yeah, anyways, I've, I've said a lot. You're there, scaring yeah. all the boomers right now with <laughs> yeah, no hope for the zoomer generation, because yeah, these are all things that were, I think there's valued. hope though. Yeah, well, no, there is. And that's where I want to get to that. Uh, because I, I think that's important before we get to that though, I do have to ask another kind of black pill question here. So, mm -hmm. uh, drugs and pornography, uh, zoomers, I tend to well, we talked about this a little and from what you said and what I've observed, they're on a different level. Like it's, it's super sad to me what's happened uh, with just, you know, the birth rate is plummeting, marriage plummeting, uh, all kinds of uh, dis sexual dysfunctions at early ages, uh, drugs, of course, suicides, all these things seem to be wreaking havoc in your generation. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, no. So um, I can't really say much on like the the drug front. I mean, I know it's we're kind of growing up in like the legalization of drugs. A lot of them, you know, some of them like to smoke weed or whatever. I don't really know any of the statistics on it um, just because like drugs are just I, I haven't been around drugs a whole lot. I'm I'm a good I'm a good old boy. You know, I, I just don't hang around people that do drugs a lot, I guess. I well, you there's some zen. guys at work that are questionable. Was what was that? I thought you did Zen. <laughs> don't tell my mom that <laughs> <laughs> okay she may watch this anyways um something that i do know though is that zoomers have um like i said they grew up with technology um so because of that like things like pornography have always been just super easily accessible and you know for the most part, most Zoomers get exposed either in middle school or at a younger age. And it's horrible. It, you know, it's, it's, it's awful. It's like a plague, like basically afflicting them. So, and because it's just so easily accessible, you have to take like the necessary steps to prevent like any access to things like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's very prominent among, um, among Zoomer men uh, is pornography. And then especially with like the culture of um, OnlyFans, where these girls will like pay to, or have you pay 
to get like particular things from them because at this point your dopamine receptors are so fried you've looked at these like you've looked at pornography so much that the only thing that can actually get you excited <laughs> now for a woman is if it's particularized like catered to you and you pay her money like it's it's terrible it's it's disgusting and that's something a lot of these guys deal with like and i'll i'll talk with guys about this and like they'll tell me what they did and i'm just like you paid money for that and i don't know like i'm black killing myself even talking about this man is there a hope in the sense that they want to escape they just don't know how and maybe that's a place that christians can step in since they're yeah, no, there's like a good chunk of them that they're not even Christian, but they like, they realize something's wrong. Some of them are so far gone that I just, I think of Roman, Romans 1, where it basically says, you know, God's given them over to a reprobate mind. It really does seem that way with some, but there really are some guys, like, I know, like, there was one guy who um, wasn't a Christian. He's like, I got to stop, man. This is not good for me. And then um, another guy um, at my work, I, he was like, he was really just like breaking down, talking to me about it. Um, and I was like sharing the gospel with him. And that was, that was a really good experience. Um, I got to connect them with my pastor as well. Um, but yeah, no, there is like a lot of hopelessness that comes with that as well. But also like, I don't want to discount that there are a lot of zoomers that kind of just fully embrace the degeneracy and just go along with it. Yeah. So let's maybe do some hope here. Uh, so uh, what, what, well, maybe this isn't hopeful. Maybe we're getting there. But what percentage of Zoomers are Christians and uh, open or, uh, and I don't know, you, I think you have the stats, Protestant, Catholic, yeah, I'm, whatever. I'm pulling that up right now. Um, so this is slightly black pilling. <laughs> it is, but it is, it's good to know, though. Um, so a little bit over half of zoomers are uh no 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 sorry i'm looking at i was looking at racial demographics about zoomers my apologies um oh okay here it is a total of 56 percent of gen z identifies as christian so a little bit over half but then like i'll break the stats down a little bit more though um the 56 percent number does not account for church attendance um so 20 percent of gen z uh, attends church at least once a week so that's yeah that's the amount of zoomer so while well, over half identify as christian only 20 percent of gen z actually attend church once a week and then 38 percent of gen z report never attending church um and it just the words are never attending church i don't know if that means never been to church but i would just assume that like that just means they don't ever go um and then 14% only attend a few times a year and 18% uh, quote seldom attend. Okay. So yeah. that uh, is almost, yeah. I mean, I, it's the first post-Christian generation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a little over half claim to be Christian, but you know, I think the overall stats are something like in the eighties, right? It's like uh, for Americans, at least that, claim to be some variety of christian it's, yeah it's pretty i think high. so and it's it's especially low again when you consider that like even though 56 percent, only 20 percent of gen z attend church and then right. if you want to think in political terms about lone bulwarks only 10 percent of gen z are white evangelicals okay so that's going to be a serious demographic shift and a political shift and yeah i don't really know what that means uh for the united states going forward are a lot of the right wingers in your experience that we, we just talked about the young men who are zoomers and right wingers, are they Christians or is there like a pagan right? That's pretty strong in the zoomer mm. world or. Yeah. I wouldn't know if they're strong. I can't really look at the statistics, but there's a large following. Um, there's a good chunk of zoomers that are big fans of, um, Oh man, I can't believe I'm talking about this guy publicly. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. <laughs> uh, but there's a large, there's a decent contingent of Zoomers that are a fan of this uh, gentleman known as Bronze Age Pervert. I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah. Um, and he kind of like advocates this, uh, you know, a vitalist um, mindset, which is kind of grounded in in Nietzsche. And um, you know, he he also takes influence from uh, some sources like uh, Yukio Mishima, who I actually like a little bit. So. Um, he, he's actually good. You should read Mishima, specifically his Sun and Steel, but I disavow all the bad things about him. 
because <laughs> he was a pagan um but uh yeah so like there's like a, a certain contingent of them and then i was just at the uh you know i was just at a political event recently and um i was talking to some people and like it was mainly like i like talked to a lot of protestants talked to a lot of catholics and eastern orthodox but there were some people who called themselves perennialists and perennialist is like a it's like a 20th century. Um, I'm, I might totally butcher this, by the way, because I actually don't know a whole lot about them. But it's like a 20th century kind of like pagan, mystical pagan movement. Um, and like they're kind of very far right. Um, they, kind, they ground themselves in the thought of individuals like Julius Evola and some others. Um, it's a very weird aspect of like the mystical pagan, right? Which again, I don't really know a whole lot about. So I can't, if you ask me questions, I can't really tell you much, but I did meet a few of those guys like that. Um, and I had interesting conversations with them, of course, but uh, yeah, there is a sense of like this weird paganism on the right, which some zoomers have uh, taken up. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's go for the positive stuff now that we've identified some of the main problems and to summarize you know, exposure to technology at early ages, uh, pornography epidemic, po potential, you know, drugs are normalized. You have instability in the home because they come from broken homes. Their parents are probably divorced. Uh, they've moved around a lot. They're, they lack identity. Uh, they're, some of them want stability, but don't really know where to look or how to find that. They're not getting married uh, at early age, at the, well, uh, they're getting married very late. <laughs> they're putting it off. If they do get married, they're not having mm -hmm. as many kids. So, you know, these are all issues, but maybe the positive things are there does seem to be at least a contingent of especially males who are more right wing. So that, that may, means they're open up to traditional values and potentially Christianity. Uh, and uh, there's certainly, it, it sounds like opportunity to showcase stability and, um, and, and this is where I wonder whether churches are doing what they should in this regard uh, overall, because the emphasis has been from the time I was in seminary, I noticed to very much reach out to the left as much as possible. Mm. And um, and I don't know if that's the way to approach Zoomers. Some of them are far left. Some of them are far right. And it sounds like this sort of center left approach isn't really going to please anyone. And so like there's an opportunity here. What do you see? What are some success stories if you have them? And then, you know, what do you think churches should do in approaching Zoomers and uh, taking resources and investing them towards this? Yeah. So um, in regard to like positives about Zoomers or at least like hope, um, even though it looks pretty rough, I would say, as you just said, that there is a contingent of not just like right-wing zoomers but uh christian zoomers who are interested in their faith uh, and in taking it more seriously um i think uh part of reaching them is well not even part of reaching them but what you kind of have to realize is despite the fact that they're a minority um I mentioned this a few weeks back as well, but um, there are these words that are oftentimes attributed to Samuel Adams, even though he didn't actually say that. So that's, that's sad, but it's still true. He says, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. So you can, with this minority contingent of Zoomers, still have hope. And part of what that involves is not always just coddling left realizing that a good chunk of zoomers are right wing and basically saying you know it's okay to be right <laughs> it's so it's okay to have these um you, you shouldn't just be like punishing them for like all these views or whatever saying oh that doesn't fall in line with you know liberal orthodoxy or something like that but you have to realize that a lot of these guys that they just want something to ground themselves in and part of what that involves is giving them something to ground themselves in. So in regard to uh, church or whatever, again, a lot of Zoomers don't read. A lot, a lot of them are basically <laughs> illiterate idiots. But of the ones who do, um, they're looking for something deeper. So give them old dead guys to read. Um, give them, I guess, make them feel like they belong to something old, something ancient, like a church that has roots, basically. Uh, in regard to identity, if they have... If they have a heritage in this country, 
Talk to them about their heritage. Ask them who their ancestors were. Go through it with them. Something that's been incredibly helpful for me has been doing research on my ancestry, making me feel like I'm more grounded. I looked at my um, old Spanish ancestors and found out that I'm actually descended from a royal house that traces back to the 12th century repelling Muslim invaders. I looked at my Anglo history and I realized that I have on my mother and my father's side deep roots to the early 1600s, going living in New England, Maryland, uh, Georgia, Alabama, Texas. It's, it's super cool. And it actually makes me feel like I have a grounding and identity in something. Um, so just open Zoomers up to that. Let them know that they're not alone. Because like I said, Zoomers mainly feel like they're, like they're indifferent and they feel like they're alone. Like they're the only people who are going through something. So they won't feel alone if not only you're there for them, but you say, Look what you have. You have a rich tradition, not only in regard to uh, your your historical heritage, but even it, to your faith. Uh, you know, you're you're grounded in something so much bigger than you. And like I said, this is why Zoomers are both driven to very right wing things and why they're driven to like papism and Eastern Orthodoxy. Uh, because they just are seeking something to ground themselves in. Uh, well, I, think, I, ho- I hope that makes sense. I, I think those things, it does uh, give them a structure when everything in life is a choice. So for me, I was, uh, as a millennial, it was reinforced a number of times that I can do whatever I want to do, that it's my choice, what career path that I go down. But you know, you're, you want to be successful in whatever career path that is. But for Zoomers, it's so much more than that. You now get to choose not just who you marry and what job, which is something that, you know, a few generations back, you wouldn't have even been able to really choose those things. You, your options would have been very limited as far as who mm. you can marry and what job. Right. And now, with, you know, with online dating and everything, you know, millennials kind of had more options. But Zoomers, it's like, man, you got to choose what gender that you want to be. You got to choose. Uh, everything about you now is a choice and there Mm. really isn't any ground rules that are set. And I think like Eastern Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism and traditional Protestantism, they all offer a sense of uh, structure. And and as you said, grounding and evangelicalism, popular evangelicalism, I don't know if it does that that at at least as much. And and that could be one of the weaknesses uh, that I think you're identifying with, uh, casual approaches to church and to god so yeah definitely and uh i don't know if you you probably have been keeping up with this i don't know but um maybe uh so probably some of the baptist uh the baptist leadership network guides you know they're they're probably seeing a lot of this go down but at the sbc convention right now they're trying to i i saw a list of it on twitter they're discussing whether they want to like formally adopt the nicene creed and this is primarily i think being pushed because a lot of these guys within the sbc they see what's happening. And so they want to ground themselves further. And, you know, I I saw some people that were kind of trashing the guys who were, who were um, basically saying, Oh no, we shouldn't accept the Nicene Creed, yada, 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 even though I I think they should. But um, you know, a lot of it does have to do with evangelical identity. Some of these people, you know, they, they feel like, Oh, well, this is too ecumenical. It can be interpreted in too many ways and it can be confusing other people. But I, I do think that's an important move. Uh, that the SBC could do is just uh, adopting that creed. Cause uh, someone had texted me the other day and she, she told, she asked me, she was like, do you think Baptists can in good faith affirm the, the Nicene creed? I know this is about zoomers and not the Nicene creed. So a bit of a side tangent, but I did let her know. I'm like, yes, I think they can affirm it and uh, they should, but yeah, all that to say, um, you know, th- this is even impacting a Baptist uh, like SBC circles, uh, the fact that this is go- like being discussed right now. And I think part of that is trying to trying to make sure these people don't leave, give them something to ground themselves in. And the Nicene Creed, it's not true just because an old church said it. It's true because every single point it makes is grounded in scripture. And the fact that this was articulated so early on, if you can say, yes, we formally assent to this, it grounds you a little bit. So I think that's part of the benefit uh, of affirming something like that. But yeah, um, ap- apologies for the bit of a side tangent on <laughs> Baptist that's politics. Yeah. So, uh, what are, what's one thing or two things that you wish that uh, Christians who are older realized about Zoomers at, or maybe one or two things that you wish that they would approach Zoomers, uh, that they would approach differently uh, when they're talking or uh 
trying to connect with Zoomers? Um, I'll start with one. Don't try, don't try and be cool. Um, <laughs> don't try and be cool. We're, we're interesting and, and we're, we're so quirky and special and unique. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, no, just, just be yourself. Uh, I was talking with someone about this who he actually he taught a lot of zoomers because he was in um he was doing teaching for a while and he said yeah when i just try to relate with them um if i just try to be myself and be normal and say zoomer things ironically as a joke and make them laugh or whatever that's when i connected with them the most um just be yourself you, you know act like if you're a boomer act like a boomer it's fun um but not only that um just listen to them sometimes ask and, and listen because um that's always helpful i know that this is a lot of generic stuff but i mean in, in reality like though we have our particularities we're all in we're on certain spots together and um there's not really I, I guess what i'm trying to say is there's not like anything particular i could think of off the top of my head other than just you know don't try and act like a zoomer um, and sometimes just listen, ask them, what are your concerns or whatever? What are you going through? Uh, be a Zoomer therapist, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't know. The, that's what I would say. Yeah. So they're not, uh, I think maybe people could get the impression from watching or listening to a podcast like this, that they're this special creature that must be approached so differently. And I don't want anyone to get that impression. Uh, they're yeah. people. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. you're they're people like anyone else, but they are growing up in a different time with a different set of challenges. And so um, that might change some things, but fundamentally they still have the same needs and, and desires and, and all the rest that uh, humans have. Um, I've wondered whether or not, you know, even in the capacity in which the, I operate online, should I put more effort into reels? Should I get on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok, you know, and I put <laughs> barely any effort into Instagram. I just don't. You know, I, I'm a millennial. It's not my thing really as much. Mm -hmm. But um, but if that's where the Zoomers are, right, like that's it, and that may be the place to meet, to, to make those connections that can then uh, become in-person connections. And uh, it, it seems weird because that it, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, online dating when that first came out. I remember there were so many Christians who were against it and thought this is terrible. And, mm -hmm. and now it's just normalized and it's just the way that people end up meeting each other and there's pros to it. There's cons to it, but uh, friendships are the same way. It seems like now, like a lot of people meet each other online uh, and then once they are in chat groups or, you know, I don't know how zoomers connect exactly. I don't know if they're watching each other's videos and com boxes, whatever, but uh, then that can transfer into a face-to-face -face interaction. It seems like that's the, the typical way things are, are going. Uh, yeah, I had a thought and it totally just escaped me. It'll, maybe it'll come back to it while I'm rambling. But yeah, no, um, I mean, like I said earlier, my future roommate is someone that I, I met online. So there are a lot of um, Zoomer interactions. Um, wait, quickly, John, remind me, what was like the question that you were building up to before you got into the I think that may jog my memory. That's, that's my problem. I'm sorry. I rambled on. Yeah, I think you, you said that Zoomers are so, normal so, people with normal needs. Yeah, so they should be approached uh, in the same way you'd approach anyone, but they have different sets of challenges. And so, um, you know, and then I started getting into, like, should we approach them online? Is that, like, something that oh, we should Oh, yes. Okay, I remember more... what you were saying. I remember what you were saying now. Yeah. Um, as much as I hate, I hate to say it, for the sake of good and effective Zoomer reach and usage, John, I'm sorry. You may have to put Chinese malware on your phone. Oh, gosh. TikTok. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm trying to get my um, wife to I take actually, this off her phone, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I actually don't think you need TikTok, but I do think that like the YouTube reels are, are actually a good means. Um, Cause there was this girl that I was dating a few months ago and she was telling me how she got off all social media or whatever. And, you know, we, we met on hinge, of course, online dating, like a zoomer, um, no longer my girlfriend, by the way, but, <laughs> um, but she was like telling me, she's like, yeah, I got off social media and all that, but occasionally I'll find myself scrolling on YouTube, like shorts and stuff. So look, man, the Zoomers, when they're bored, even if they don't have social media, if they have YouTube, they will go to YouTube Reels. It's and one so of my buddies, unhealthy. 
<laughs> oh, I know. It's horrible. And one of my buddies who has, he doesn't have Instagram. He doesn't have Snapchat. He doesn't have Twitter. He has none of it. You know what he does use? He uses Twitter. And you know what he looks at on YouTube? He looks at YouTube shorts. So yes, put time into making YouTube shorts. I never YouTube watch shorts. them. I will say you won't reach me. I never watch YouTube shorts, but you're apparently reaching all these other people I know. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think that may be uh, helpful and important um, is being able to take these large messages and like make them succinct for the rotting zoomer mind which has been totally fried and destroyed by tiktok and instagram reels um so but yeah and you can do the same with instagram reels as well what's the deal with helen keller like why don't zoomers <laughs> zoomers don't think she existed or something like i don't know what the deal like no one ever questioned <laughs> this as far as i know but all of a sudden all these zoomers are like thinking it's a conspiracy that Helen Keller exists. Like there's weird okay. stuff like that, that uh, I don't, I, I don't know if that gives you an insight into the zoomer mind. John, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. If you from the beginning of your conception couldn't hear and couldn't see, Oh no. How can you conceptualize anything? No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to go down that road. Yeah. That's just a funny <laughs> little zoomer quirk because it's a safe edgy conspiracy theory that they can do, you know, like, and be thankful they're doing that instead of like, I don't know, something more heinous. <laughs> um have you heard of the birds aren't real conspiracy no yeah it's just a conspiracy that birds aren't real and that they're all like government cameras or whatever what <laughs> specifically like seagulls yeah <laughs> seagulls <laughs> something like that yeah it's it's silly. i think the that, zoomers that have watched a little bit way too many things on a screen so now the the lines between you're real... telling me now for the first time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the lines man. between reality and fantasy are somewhat blurred oh my so they probably don't trust the government they probably don't trust a lot of institutions oh yeah no that's absolutely true there is like i feel like this is a case in a lot of institutions but there is a thing where um okay this is actually i'm actually glad you brought this up there's this thing with the boomers where the boomers i mean you know not a lot of them are like this anymore at least i hope they're not maybe some still are oh crap some probably still are Anyways, there's a thing where they watch TV and it's like, it's true because the TV said it. And, you know, we, we know that's kind of garbage. I mean, look at CNN and MSNBC and all these things. And, you know, uh, even Fox and the things that Fox says, because, they're, I mean, they're not even really that conservative anyways. Um, but, you know, there's basically like we, we know whatever's said on the TV isn't true. But a lot of boomers grew up believing that there's a problem with Zoomers. And that because Zoomers are illiterate idiots who only can look at a screen, they will get they well, their entire worldview will sometimes be formed from TikTok, and like the TikTok person will be like, "This is why the genocide in Gaza is bad and perpetuates whiteness." Whatever. Here are all my sources, and they'll put these sources like really quickly on the sides, like for a second. And <laughs> I know for a second, no Zoomer is actually looking those sources up. They're just like, yes, so true, so true, and then scroll, and then scroll. Or there's also a common uh, thing among Zoomers where they watch streamers. So these guys, these, like, fat idiot leftist men will be sitting back playing, like, World of Warcraft while they talk about leftist politics, and then these people will send them, like, super chats and money donations. And literally, like, a Zoomer, a Zoomer cannot consume a meal alone without watching a YouTube video or a stream. It's true. I even struggle with this because the brain rot goes so deep. <laughs> but yeah, that's very common. Um, for that's wow. how they form a lot of their views. So it goes from boomers trusting everything on TV to Zoomers trusting whatever the TikTok person says because they have all the sources listed out to the side. That's so isolated. Like you're, <laughs> you're lit, like like it was bad when uh, you know the boomers started watching like for their families. They'd be like, oh, let's watch TV as a family, and that was like viewed as a negative thing. And now we're like literally in our own little worlds on a small little screen watching some other guy play a video game while we eat. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, I used uh, to, this has been going on a long time too, because I remember back in like middle school, my freshman year of high school, I would do that kind of thing. I'd put on like a video game YouTuber and just watch him while I ate food. Well, I, 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 right, so I, I got you here. Not I got to ask you, like, why? Why? What, what was fun about that to you? Like, why was that interesting? Like, well, you know, sometimes you like to watch the gameplay that was happening. Sometimes they'd be adding commentary over it. 
and things like that. And then you listen to that. And I don't know if you've seen this as of recent. If you're on one of these scrolling apps like TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts, there's a thing they'll do where they'll put like a movie clip or someone talking or anything really. There's two screens, one up here for the movie clip or whatever. And then Subway Surfers, the game down here, or some like GTA yes. car game. And I make a point whenever that's happening and I'm interested in the video, I cover the bottom of my screen just so I don't watch it. Because I'm like, this is this is horrible. This yeah, the first time I saw that, I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was a mistake <laughs> that someone had. Why did they like link this video game to this clip or this commentary? And then I realized, oh, my goodness. Like, uh, is it Redeem Zoomer? I think like he just plays video games. So play like Minecraft. And I'll just talk yeah. about Protestant theology as he's playing Minecraft. And I, I watched some <laughs> of the episodes and I was just like, people watch this? Like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I um, I, it, I don't yeah. really like uh, watch like a whole lot of Redeem Zoom or we're like mutuals on Twitter or whatever. But um, I if I ever do listen to like one of his videos, I have to like turn the phone off and let it play because I just... I refuse to, I refuse to like do this. Like I won't participate. Like, you know, the whole thing where it's like, I won't eat the bugs. I won't live in the pods. I won't, (laughs) I won't do That's like me now with like this zoomer culture stuff, because I just realized I'm like, I can't do this. But you know, if, if redeem zoomer is sharing the gospel with people through Minecraft, then sure. Go ahead. Or if, you know, if he wants to explain, I don't know. Why not baseball? Why not baseball? Why, why like, you know, I don't watch sports that are happening like in real time instead of like, I, I, I don't know. I still don't understand it. John, but, uh, you may have just come up with like a new uh, thing. <laughs> watching NFL football to that. Well, oh, like the gospels explained or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with yeah. that, uh, Matthew, thank you for sharing with us your extensive knowledge about Zoomers from firsthand experience and from your friends. And uh, you can check out Matthew Pearson's X at underscore Matthew Pearson. And uh, it's funny you only gave me X. You didn't give me your TikTok or your Instagram. So well, there there is no TikTok. I don't I deleted that app. Uh, you may still be able to find my account there, but I, it's oh. deleted. Uh, and then I'm just people can find my Instagram. I don't, I don't I only use it mainly for personal family and friend stuff. But um, anywhere else you can find me is either yeah, like the one podcast I'm on that you mentioned in the beginning, the Erratic Protestant podcast. Or you could, I've written uh, two articles for American Reformer That's and right. one for True Scripts. Scripts. That's so, right. Uh, yeah, I'll be sending you something soon as well. Uh, so hopefully. Yeah, we get, actually uh, are again. having, uh, actually, I'm not sure when I'm going to release this. So I'm not sure if we had or are having Pastor Mathis. I already recorded Sean Mathis, though, on the podcast, partially because of oh, the awesome. you, you wrote for True Scripts. So yeah, uh, nice. So anyway, keep up the good work and uh, thank you. Thank you once again. I appreciate it. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you.